Good afternoon. It's Francis, and if you tuned in about 10 minutes ago, I've had to restart this video. Anyway, welcome to Storytime. This is Francis. Hello, Storytime families and friends. And I'm going to repeat a couple of items if you were with me earlier. Just wanted you to know that I have been to the Austin Public Library where I picked up today's book over and under the pond. Just wanted you to know that's why this book is kind of shiny. It has a plastic cover on it, which the library does to protect the books that it lends to all the borrowers. And the reason why I chose to go to the library is because I'm an Austin Public Library member and I use the library all the time, the online hold, sort of referencing, looking up, finding what you want and then holding them and then going to my branch library to pick it up. Right now, we are not able to go to our branch libraries or even into the central library downtown, but there are eight branches throughout the city and the central library on Cesar Chavez, and those are open for curbside hold pickups. So when you are finished listening to this post, check out what we will post on the Umlauf page because it will give you instructions on how to use your Austin Public Library which I think has been a fabulous resource for so many of us. I was down there and it's very easy to pick it up, safe distance. I didn't even take my car, I walked down there. So you can do that without a car and you can safely distance pick up the books that you reserve when you, when you know they're ready. Anyway, on with the story. Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. And thank you to Chronicle Books for letting us read this through our social media. They, Chronicle Books is the publisher. Over and Under the Pond. And again, if you heard this earlier, I chose this because we have ponds at the Umlauf Sculpture Garden and Museum, and they have been there before the sculptures were there. They're part of the natural environment at the Umlauf and of course at our adjacent Barton Springs and this book spoke to me because of our ponds. This pond is very big in the book. Our ponds are not but we have some of the same creatures and definitely a lot of organic plant material in our ponds. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. And we're focusing on a mother and a son in a boat on a very large pond. This pond is, I believe, taken from inspiration up in New York State, in the Adirondacks. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask. The ask is the little boy. Under the pond, mom says. So here are the lily pads over the pond here are mom and son looking down under the pond, and I think they spy a fish. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. And we definitely have minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. Don't think we have a large carp like catfish, but you can see that is the image of the boat and the mother and the son peering down over the boat into the water. So this is a view from below. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirly gig beetles, loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks ready to lunge. Do y'all see those whirly gig beetles? Never really heard of a whirly gig beetle, but when I read this book and the author here compares whirly gig beetles to skaters, I thought also about our skater sculpture by Charles Umloff that's just adjacent to the largest pond at the sculpture garden. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. So there they are rowing. 
lift and dip and pull is what they're doing with their oar. And they see the turtle. And they see the ducks. And there's the big turtle. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, cucklery. Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a catfish, excuse me, caddis fly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. I've never heard of a caddis fly. And I swear, I practice saying it, caddis fly. Caddis fly larva, let's look it up later. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Now, we kind of know this isn't a pond in Austin, Texas. If there is a moose <laughs> eating water lilies. <laughs> I, love, I love it, but that's okay. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. I don't think we have beavers either, but pretty cool. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfish teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. So here we have an image of a young bird leaving its nest. Down here, we have images of the tadpole turning into the frog. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step. I think it spies something under the pond and it strikes. It catches a wiggling, quick silver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. See that? The ponds provide a lot of nutrients for lots of creatures. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. This is a view from above looking down at the pond and the mother and the son in their boat is, it seems very small below, doesn't it? You know what I liked about this too that made me think of the umlauf? When it says over the pond we drift, our heads tipped up to the sun. When you come back to the umlauf, when we are able to welcome you back, you will notice so many of our sculptures have upward gazes. It's one of Charles Umlauf's signature themes in his sculptor as a sculptor in his work. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. You can tell here by this picture it's getting to be sunset. The day is ending as they watch the dragon fly a light on the boy's knee. And there's the other picture. So this mother and son are out at sunset. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Osprey circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. You can tell it is becoming sunset. Over the pond, under the pond. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore. As a far off loon calls goodnight, the sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. 
and the hidden world under the pond. You can see how large this pond was. And there's their house with the lights on. They've docked their boat in front. The loon is calling good night. And the hidden world under the pond will wake to another day after the evening. Thanks so much for joining me. I am sorry I had a little bit of a delay. And again, we are hoping to see you back at the Umlauf later this summer. Until then, go off and find a pond that you can find. Um, take care this weekend. It is going to be really warm, really hot actually. And finally, support the Umlauf by coming online and looking at some of the other social media accessible, virtual, educational, all sorts of programming that we have for you. And Finally, support your Austin Public Library by using your Austin Public Lo Library card and taking out a book today or tomorrow. Cheers. See you next week.